Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. Today in part 6.2 of our Mastering Parallel Programming series in C-Shop, we are diving into two concurrent collection classes, concurrent queue and concurrent stack. These classes help us avoid the hassle of implementing our own locking mechanism for concurrent access. So before we get started, just a quick reminder to subscribe my channel, hit the red button and don't forget to click on the little bell icon. That way you will be notified every time I upload a new video. Okay, without any further delay, let's get started. Parallel programming using PFX, that is Parallel Framework Extension Libraries in c -sharp. We have been following along with my previous videos in this series, you might recognize this diagram. In those videos, we covered two pillars of a structured data parallelism, p q and parallel class. I also covered task parallelism. Currently, I am focusing on the concurrent collections. .NET Thread Safe Concurrent Collection Concurrent collection in c -sharp are Thread Safe Collection classes provided into the system.collection.concurrent namespace. They are designed to handle concurrent access by multiple threads, ensuring data integrity and reducing the need for explicit synchronization. In our last videos, we focused on the iProducer Consumer Collection T interface, its key methods and an overview of implementing classes like concurrent queue, concurrent stack and concurrent bag. If you haven't watched that video yet, I highly recommend you do. You might find the link to that video somewhere in the upper right corner of this video. Today, our focus is on discussing on the concurrent QT and concurrent Q stack classes in detail with practical examples. Demystifying concurrent QT and concurrent stack T. So what is concurrent Q? Concurrent QT is a thread safe first in first out that is FIFO collection. What does it mean? It means that the first item added to the queue is the first one to be removed. Whereas concurrent stack is a thread safe last in first out that is LIFO collection. So here it means that the last item added to the stack is the first want to be removed. Okay, so you might be wondering why we need concurrent QT and concurrent stack T when we already have QT and stack T classes, right? To make this clear, I'll compare these collections so you can easily understand and remember the difference. So let's understand these difference. Number one, namespace. So concurrent QT and concurrent stack T are in the system.collection.concurrent namespace, whereas QT and stack T are in system.collection.generic namespace. Number two, a structure. Concurrent QT has a FIFO structure and concurrent stack has a LIFO structure. Similarly, QT has a FIFO structure and stack T has a LIFO structure. Next, we have thread safe. So concurrent Q and concurrent stack are thread safe. When we talk about QT and stack T, they are not thread safe. Why? Because if multiple threads try to add or remove items simultaneously, it can lead to race condition, data corruption and unexpected behavior. So, to use them safely in a multi-threaded environment, you need to implement your own synchronization mechanism, typically using locks like lock statement. Now, let's talk about the performance. So, concurrent QT and concurrent stack T are designed for better performance in multi-threaded scenario. They handle synchronization internally. So Multiple threads can add and remove items simultaneously without causing data corruption or requiring additional locking mechanism. Whereas QT and stack T might perform slightly better in a single threaded scenarios. However, in multi threaded scenarios, performance can degrade significantly due to the need for external synchronization. Last but not the least, we have API difference. Concurrent QT, it has methods like in queue, the item, try DQ, out T result, try P, out T result. So if we talk about the in queue, T item, what it does, it adds an item to the end of the queue. Whereas try DQ method, what it does, it tries to remove and return the item at the beginning of the queue. So returns a boolean indicating success or failure. Whereas try P, it just tries to return the item at the beginning of the queue without removing it. So it returns a boolean indicating success or failure. If you talk about the QT, it has methods like in queue T item, DQ and P. So in queue again, it adds an item to the end of the queue, DQ. It removes and returns the item at the beginning of the queue and P it returns the item at the beginning of the queue without removing it. So that's how it is just going to function. Now let's talk about the concurrent stack. It has methods like push T item, try pop out T result, try peak out T result. Whereas a stack T has methods like push T item, pop and peak. It does not have try version, right? So what push T item does for the concurrent stack side? So it adds an item to the top of the stack. Whereas try pop, what it does, it tries to remove and return the item at the top of the stack. It returns a boolean value indicating success or failure. And try pick, what it does, it tries to return the item at the top of the stack without removing it. So it returns a boolean value indicating success or failure. In similar way, stack push method, what it does, it adds an item to the top of the stack. Pop method, it removes and returns the item at the top of the stack 
and peak method it returns the item at the top of the stack without removing it now you must have an idea why concurrent queue and concurrent stack introduced in c sharp okay so let's switch to the visual studio and see all these things in action okay so here we are in visual studio here we are going to see the demo of concurrent qt concurrent collection that is fifo first in first out for scenario of logging system so let's imagine you have a logging system where multiple threads are generating log messages that need to be processed and written to a file or database using a concurrent queue e class allows multiple threads to enqueue log messages safely okay let's get a feel of it here so the demo what i have done i have created one console application named concurrent queue and concurrent stack demo that has program.cs file in program.cs file first of all i have added necessary namespace like using system using system.collection dot concurrent using system dot threading dot task why i have added using system because it contains fundamental classes and base classes that define commonly used value and reference data type whereas system dot collection dot concurrent namespace it provides us thread safe collection classes that are designed to be used in the concurrent scenario that we are going to utilize in this program next we have system dot threading dot task it provides types that simplify the work of writing concurrent and asynchronous code that's what i have added this namespace now there is a class named program that has main method which is an entry point of this application so at the program level as a global variable i have created concurrent queue collection object that's what i have written a static concurrent queue a string queue is equal to new concurrent queue string so this class is nothing but a thread safe queue designed to handle multiple threads accessing it concurrently and i declared a static keyword to it because i want this can be accessed by all methods within the class that's what i have mentioned a static keyword over here then there is a main method which is an entry point of this application so here first of all i'm just printing this statement into console demo of concurrent qt concurrent collection fifo first in first out scenario logging system that i have printed into the console window with the help of console dot right line state and what i am doing i'm just creating a task task one that runs asynchronously using task dot run method and it in queuing log entries into the concurrent so in for loop it is just going to execute five times and for every time what it does it is just going to create one string log entry and what it contains the value log what are the value of i log i generated at what is the current time so date time dot now right and then this log entry string variable i am just putting into the in queue method right queue dot in queue log entry so this is basically making an entries into the concurrent queue then what i am doing i am just writing in queued in log entry then i have written this statement task dot delay 100 wait what it does it simulate time delay between the log entry if you notice i have created another task task 2 as a continuation task that starts after task 1 complete that's what i have used task 1 dot continue with map okay, so what it does first of all i am just making some delay so for making some delay what i have done i have written this statement task dot delay 500 wait it makes sure that there is a some delay what i have done i am just checking if is empty and i am just putting the exclamation mark it means means we are just creating a loop that continues while the queue is not empty and then finally what i am doing i have written this statement if queue dot try dq out string result so this statement attempts to dq an item from the queue if successful it stores the item in result and print a message to the console that's what i have written this statement console dot write line processed out and whatever the result that i am picking it out that i am just going to print into this console window with the help of console dot write line and then finally i have issued this statement task dot wait all task one comma task two so it makes sure that the main thread waits until task one and task two complete then finally i am just printing this statement done to the console window and i have issued this console dot read line so console could not get closed until i click on it okay so that's how this program is a structure let me go and execute this program and show this output to you okay so output got appear into this console window if you see demo of concurrent qt concurrent collection p4 first in first out scenario logging system got printed into the console right as a first state then if you see then five enqueued statement got printed and five process statement got printed you notice this enqueued first statement what it got printed log zero generated at this date and this time if you see the process first item what it processed log zero generated at this date and this time so and here's the first in first out log zero inserted first and log zero removed out so it follows the fifo structure overall this program demonstrated the fifo behavior of the concurrent queue showing logs being enqueued 
and then process in the same order that's what we witnessed over here right okay so now let's see the practical example of the concurrent stack and what is the scenario undo functionality so let's imagine an application like a text editor where user perform action that can be undone using a concurrent stack t allows you to keep track of user action and provide an undo function and that's how we are going to see in this example so first of all what i have done in this program i have added necessary namespaces like using system using system dot collection dot concurrent using system dot threading dot task then there is a class name program that has main method which is an entry point of this application and before that i have created one concurrent stack object that's what i have written a static concurrent stack string a stack is equal to new concurrent stack a string and i have marked with the static so that it will be used throughout of the application so in this main method what i have done first i have printed this statement into console demo of concurrent stack t concurrent collection leaf o last in first out and what is the scenario undo functionality next i have created a task task 1 that run asynchronously with the help of task dot run method so what it does it loops from 0 to 4 and pushes the strings like action 0 action 1 etc onto the stack that's what i have used this statement tag dot push action i right? and it also prints out the action prop that's what i have written this statement console dot right line performed action i next i have created another task task 2 as a continuation task that's what i have written task 1 dot continue with and inside that what i am doing i am trying to pop each action from the stack until it's empty that's what i have written while stack dot try pop out result and it is just going to print into this statement what i am printing console dot right line undid result so basically i am just printing each action what it is under right so that's what this statement is going to print it. then i wrote task dot wait all task 1 comma task 2 what it does it ensures that the main thread waits until both task 1 and task 2 are completed before proceeding finally i am just holding this console window with the help of console dot read line so that's how this program is constructed let me go and execute this program and show this output okay so output got appeared into this console window you see demo of concurrent stack t concurrent collection leaf o last in first out and undo functionality got printed as a first state and then performed action got printed performed action 0 action 1 action 2 action 3 action 4 if you see undid happen for the action 4 first because this is the leaf first out last in first out what was the last action performed action 4 so that's what and we are going to perform try pop operation then it is just going to perform at the last one. that's what action 4 is just going to consider and is just going to undo that work whatever the action 4 has done that's what this statement got printed undid action 4 action 3 action to action 1 and action 0 so overall first it shows the action perform in the sequence as a part of the push operation in concurrent stack collection and then it followed the action undone in the reverse order due to the leafo nature of the stack over okay so that brings me to end up my session today to sum up in this video we learned about two important concurrent collections concurrent qt and concurrent stack t with practical example we also witnessed how it helps us avoid the hassle of implementing our own locking mechanism for concurrent access that's all for this video guys if you like this video hit the like button share it with your friends and colleagues subscribe to my channel if you haven't done already thanks for watching see you next video